So today for maths, we're going to be focusing on learning how to do some money calculations using a bank statement. Now this links really, really well with um, our types of payments that we were doing earlier this week, as well as budgeting that we have been doing throughout our money topic. So I've done an example bank statement here. Oh, that should be 2021. Um, so this has got some account details at the top. So this person is called Miss A. Smith. This is her sort code and account number. So that's like the important information about the bank account that this is for um, and the date on it as well. It's for a month. So these are some keys that are on, uh, are some little letters that are on your bank sheet and bank statement. And this is the key to explain what they all mean. So you'll see here, we've got all our transactions, the date that they were done, um, and then the code which tells you what type of a payment or what it was that was there. Then you've got the details of who the money was paid to or paid from, um, and then it says whether the money was out or in. And then we've got the balance as we go throughout. So let's have a look at this and see how we can break it down. So the main part here we're looking at just now is the transactions. So we've got our date, our codes and our details, which is what we're looking at for just now. So I'm just gonna scroll up slightly so we can see the key at the same time. So you can see our first one here is CR, which means credit. Now, when money goes into your account, we call it credit. So the money is getting credited to your account, you're getting it. And when it goes out, it's being called debited. So that's why we say a debit card because it takes the money out of your bank account. So if we've got credit, that means the money is going in. So we've got credit, credit here and it's a thousand pounds. So normally when someone has a big lump sum like that go into their bank account, it is normally their wages. So whatever this person does, that is their wages going in for the month. Now you'll see that when from last month they had 250 pounds already in their bank account. So to find their new balance, we would add the balance that there already was with the money that's just gone in. So there would be 1,250 pounds in this particular person's account. Then on that same day, there is a direct debit. So what that means is a direct debit is something that's scheduled and the company who you have agreed to pay it to take it out of your bank account every month on the same day. So every month there is a direct debit comes straight out of your bank account. You've set it up already. You don't need to worry about it. Um, and in this case, it's 450. So I would assume that would either be rent or like a mortgage. So I've put rent. And then you can see because that money has gone out, we did have 1,250. How do you think we would then find how much money is in the account? So if we had 1,250 and we've paid this, we would need to take 450 away from this. So that would give us 800 pounds as our new balance. Then this person has obviously gone to Dumfries for the day. They've gone to the cash machine and they've taken out two, or two, 20 pounds. We can see that says ATM, so a cash withdrawal from the machine. So again, we take the 20 pounds off of the balance because that has been spent off the card. So it's 780. Then we've got an ESO, which is a standing order. So that's something that you set up, usually using your online banking, where you agree to transfer a certain amount to another bank account on each date. So in this case, you've set up, so on the 3rd of June, every month, there's 50 pounds goes into your savings account um, and that has been taken. So like a direct debit, it's automatic, but with a standing order, it's not somebody that you necessarily owe money to. It can be your bank account or another bank account of like, say maybe you were paying back a parent for something they'd bought you. You could put a standing order for that. Whereas a direct debit is like to pay for a purchase or to pay somebody that you don't really know or are not friends with. So that's come out again because it's out, we've taken it off and you can see the balance has gone down by 50. Then this person has gone to Tesco and they've used their debit card. So that's what our DC stands for. They've spent £61.88. So again, we take that off. Then they have gone online. They've used their debit card to pay for something on Amazon that cost £150. Again, we subtract to find the new balance. 15th of June, their direct debit for their mobile phone contract has come out for £40 and the balance has gone down again. There we've got the debit card again at the petrol station for £52.20, and again, balance goes down. Then they've gone to the cash machine at Lockerbie and they've taken out £200 for whatever reason they needed it for. And again, you can see the balance has dipped down by £200. 
Now we've got another credit. Now the last time the credit came in, it was our wages, but in this case, it is um, money that is being paid to us. So Joe Bloggs owed you 50 pounds for, I don't know, you bought, you lent him some money or you bought him something and he had to pay you back. So he's transferred or credited your account with 50 pounds. So this time we wouldn't take the money away to find the new balance. We would add it on because this money's come into our bank account rather than going out. And then we've got our debit card again. We've got McDonald's Johnson Bridge. You've spent 18 pounds 20. That's a lot of McDonald's. And it's dipped down again. And then finally, we've got a check. Now we talked about that in our ways to pay that they're not used very often, but they are sometimes. And it's generally to pay somebody for like a service. So in this case, it was for a plumber um, and you paid him 150 pounds for whatever it was that he did for you. So that just talks about all of the different payments and um, that have gone in and out of your account for that one month. And then we can see here at the bottom, we've got our summary. So we've got our total paid in, our opening balance, our total paid out and our closing balance. So our total paid in is the total money that has gone into the account in this month. So we've got 1,050, 1,050 pounds. The opening balance was what was there at the start. So that was 250. The total that was paid out um, would be adding all of these numbers together to find the total and it was £1,192.28 and then the closing balance, so at the end of this statement, the end of this month of June, there is £102.82 left in the bank account. So hopefully that's given you a bit of an understanding of the different um, payments that go in and out of a bank account. I've just realised that should be June and not February. Um, so I'll change that. So your activity today is going to be, your first one anyway, is going to be you'll get a bank statement with lots of blank bits on it. So you can see here that you're having to fill in the blanks. Now, we talked about how we would calculate these things, but let's quickly look at this one here. So we've got a direct debit to the water company. So we know that £20 has gone out. So we took it away to get 80 now we've got 80 and we take out 10 pounds from the cash machine. So how do you think we would find the new balance if it's gone out? So you would have to take it away. So to put that in, you would fill in there that that is 70 pounds. And then you keep working your way down to fill in all of the blank totals and the account summary as well. Um, after you have done that, you have got also a blank bank statement and I would like you to come up with a reasonable bank statement. I've popped some information on it for you, like the wages that have gone in, but I want you to try and budget for a month. So this applies our bank statement skills and our budgeting skills and our methods of payment skills. And I want you to try and budget for that person for the month. You can buy whatever you want, but remember they'll need to pay their rent and they'll need to pay some bills as well. And then beyond that, you could buy some nice things, but you need to make sure you're keeping track of what goes out, what comes in and the balance as you go. So I've just drawn out a really quick example here just to go through how we would lay out working out a new balance. So you can see here, I've got a little mini kind of statement and at the start of this statement, my opening balance is 250 pounds, but then I get in 1,500. So how would I find my new balance? I know that I had this much and I added this much more, so I put them together. So 1,500 plus 250. Now that's quite easy to do mentally, so I know that that is 1,000. 750. But if it's any trickier than that, definitely do a chimney sum just to make sure you're being really accurate. So now we can see I've got 1,750 and I have spent 75 pounds. That's come out of my account. So remember, if it's come out, it has to come away from the balance, get taken away. So I would do 1,750, take away 75. Zero, take away five, we can't do. So we go next door, we borrow one and leave that at four. This makes 10. 10 take away five is five. Four take away seven, we can't do, we don't have enough. So go next door again, make this six and borrow the 10. 14 take away seven is seven. Six take away nothing is six and one take away nothing is one. So our new balance would be 1,675 pounds. So that just shows you how you would work out change in balance with money coming in and out of your account.